A quick thought. Can anybody give a quick, quick thought on Donald Dell? Little known fact that he never lost a Davis Cup match as a captain. Very passionate. Donald uh, was a huge force. Donald Dell really is a lifelong tennis contributor. Donald Dell has truly lived his life in the game, committed to taking action and always demonstrating excellence. As a boy, Donald was one of the finest players of his generation, national champion at 15 and ranked number two in the nation as a junior. He was also a fine student attending Yale University. An All-American for three years, Donald reached the finals of the NCAA Singles Championship. And once Donald graduated, he didn't miss a beat. At Forest Hills in 1961, Donald made it to the quarterfinals, upsetting the sixth seed before losing a very tight match to a fairly accomplished redhead from Australia, Rod Laver. That same year, Donald made his Davis Cup debut and was ranked number four in the country. Two years later, he would clinch the opening tie against Iran to kick off the American team's run to the title. Donald is a genius with human emotion. I mean, Donald knows what will make you jump. And uh, it, he comes up with more stuff than anybody else. I mean, like when you're with Donald, something will be happening. Somehow or another, he's got a deal here and an angle there, and something's going on. Yet even as he traveled the world, competing against the world's best, Donald remained a true Renaissance man. During this time, he earned a law degree from the University of Virginia. Donald played a key role in America's War on Poverty, serving as Special Assistant to Sergeant Shriver in the Office of Economic Opportunity, and also as an advance man for Shriver's brother-in-law, Robert Kennedy. Donald was frequently able to wed his passion for social justice to his lifelong engagement with tennis. This was pure Donald, taking it to the streets, looking to make a difference, and eventually creating the National Junior Tennis League with Arthur Ashe and Charlie Passarell. But even as he thrived in the world of politics, Donald's love for tennis remained strong. In 1968, he became Davis Cup captain. Bringing the Sacred Cup back home became a team mission. We only have one mission, and the mission is to win the Davis Cup for the United States. And, uh, and we accomplished that. So, so we, we worked very much as a team. Uh, Donald was very receptive to everything that we, we had to say about it. And, um, and it was just a great year. Piloting the team to victory in 1968, Donald's team successfully defended the Cup triumph a year later, the close-knit team beating Romania. With tennis now an open sport in 1968, Donald was on the ground floor of the business of player management. His first two clients were the powerful Stan Smith and the remarkable Arthur Ashe. After the 1968 Davis Cup team campaign, on a handshake, basically, I agreed to trust him with my life. Donald was a lawyer, well-connected, based in Washington, D.C., and he had certainly done well by us the year before, so we thought Donald was the guy for us. But Donald didn't just care about his players, he cared about all players. Most prominently in 1972, when along with Jack Kramer, he helped create the ATP. With the urgency that has always marked his life, Donald's sports marketing firm grew, staking a new reputation for himself and pro-serve as leaders in television, being right in the thick of things for the first Breakfast at Wimbledon broadcast in 1979, creating new events, and broadening his reach to other sports. I've been involved in the sport as a player, as an agent, Davis Cup captain. Uh, if anybody deserves to be in, Donald deserves to be in, and uh, he's thrilled to death. Uh, his mother's 101, and she's going to be there uh, to, to see him get in. But tennis remained Donald's lifeblood. From Arthur Ashe's Wimbledon triumph to Stan Smith came many more. Yvonne Lendl, Jimmy Connors, Stefan Edberg, Yannick Noah, Gabriella Sabatini, and Tracy Austin. I can't think of any pocket of the game that he didn't incorporate his knowledge and his, and his business acumen. I mean, he really helped propel the game into the next level, um, was a terrific agent, uh, just a terrific promoter of the game. And so really, he's a great asset to the, to the world of tennis. Donald remains driven, his life a nonstop juggling act. 
His current firm, Best, represents the game's best. His leadership role in marketing tennis on television, his lifelong friends, and most of all, his family. Wife Carol and daughters Christina and Alexandra. He has dedicated his life to professionalizing our sport in a way that has seen tennis explode around the world. No one knows this more than his close friend, Jack Kramer. The great thing about Donald is any time you, any one of the players that was associated with Donald and he represented them, uh, they're never going to have to work for a living after they're finished playing tennis. He, he made them a ton of money and, and uh, he was truly a great financial advisor to them. What all sports generally have is a commissioner. And if we were ever going to have a, a man who would be able to do the right thing by the sport, uh, in, in tennis it would be Donald Dell. He's just got all those skills available and it would be wonderful if they named him the commissioner. I wish they would. No one has more deeply impacted the game at more levels than Donald Dell, bringing together literally hundreds of organizations, companies, and people to make our sport bigger and better. Donald, for all you've done, we thank you.